Hello and welcome to Wing In It. In this video today, I am joined by my good friend Tayro from Tuck and Cash. How are you doing today, Tayro? I am doing pretty well. Thanks for having me. Excellent. Good for you to join me here today. We're going to be taking a look at the birds from the base game that we think got better with the introduction of the Oceania expansion. So, of course, a lot's changed with the introduction of the Oceania expansion. We've both done plenty of videos taking a look at that with the new boards, the new food type in the nectar, and of course, plenty of new birds. But we have all these existing birds from the base game um, that have definitely changed. Some of them got better, some of them maybe got a bit worse uh, in this video today. We're going to be taking a look at the ones that we think got better. So um, I'm going to start us off here with our first bird of the okay. list. And for me, it is the California quail. So this uh -huh. is one of those birds that I think from the base game um, definitely got a bit of hate for uh, several reasons. Um, I think just the food cost can be a little bit off-putting. Um, and getting eggs, as we well know, on the baseboards, pretty straightforward to do. So these kind of powers that gain you additional eggs may be not so good there. But of course, with the new boards uh, on Oceania, getting those eggs is a lot harder. And I think a power like this that is going to get you eggs specifically in the forest as well is a particularly strong one here. Right. Yeah. I, I think another another change is that is very relevant here that the Oceania um, brings is the introduction of nectar. Now that you start with nectar, so you can get down the California quote in turn one. But before that, you have to pick up food. So um, I think that contribute to the power boost here as well. Yeah, definitely a big change. Like you say, if you have to take that extra turn just to get the food to get it down, it can be quite slow. Um, that's definitely been yeah. my experience with California quail on the baseboards is, is just not being able to get it down quickly enough. But um, like you say, I think there's plenty of birds like this with uh, duplicated food cost or just in general, those slightly more expensive birds with that nectar at the start. Um, much, much easier to get down. So yeah, definitely a better bird now, I think, um, now that we have got the new Oceania boards compared to the baseboards. So um, that's my first pick. What is your gonna going to be your first pick here, Tay? Wow, that, that was a that was a really good one. Um, I think I'm gonna jump on the egg train here. Like you say, you know, with Oceania board, egg is more difficult to come by. So I think another one way to counter that is make sure that your egg laying action is really efficient. So you're getting multiple eggs in one turn. So in that sense, I'm gonna say birds like the meadowlark, right? Um, mm. definitely get get you know a lot more attention with the Oceania board because now you can potentially get up to four eggs um, in one turn that's going to serve you for a while yeah absolutely I mean you know just looking of course at the, the Oceania boards you know you get only one egg potentially on that um, you know turn when you're laying eggs if, if you haven't got any birds down um, so getting the extra ones here definitely strong and yeah, I feel like these are birds that I didn't really like on the baseboards. Um, you know, <laughs> X-Base was a problem. I think generally the strategy, as we uh, all well know from the baseboards, is, is very centered around egg laying. And yeah, laying lots of eggs, you're going to run out of space eventually. But um, that tends to be less of a problem on Oceania. And like you say, um, getting even more eggs on that one turn when you do lay eggs so that you can then spend more of your turns, you know, getting food, drawing cards um, and playing some of those big point birds. Um, that's definitely key. So, yeah, birds like this that, that get you those extra eggs when you are laying eggs, um, super strong indeed. So, yeah, definitely a good pick. And um, yeah, let's 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 keep talking eggs. Let's keep talking eggs because I feel like that is <laughs> a key element um, of strategy and, and and of being able to you know be efficient and score points on the Oceania boards is to get a lot of eggs in a single turn. And a great way of doing that. Uh, is by playing a bird like the Says Phoebe. So, uh -huh. uh, yeah, these when played powers, there's a bunch of them uh, for all different nest types. But yeah, when you play them, you then get to lay one egg on each of your birds with that matching nest type. In the case of Says Phoebe, we're of course looking yeah. at cup nests. So, um, these are the kind of birds where actually I think if I see these in the starting hand now, I'm much more likely to keep them. I think just getting that uh, big influx of eggs early on in the game, you know, even playing these in, in round one or round two. Can be really helpful for tempo get that first grass and bird down but get a bunch of eggs without having to lay eggs and then you know you can spend again more of those turns 
uh, playing birds and, and trying to build out your engine. So yeah, I think these can be particularly strong. Like I say, early in the game where you ordinarily might not play them like that in the base game. Yeah, I mean, that's a very good point. That That's exactly my experience as well. Um, before Oceania, I would never think about keeping this when play bird, power birds mm. in starting hand. But with Oceania, just a few eggs that you can get in early game is such a huge boost to your tempo. So I, I definitely think they're a lot more powerful with the Oceania board now. Yeah, absolutely. I think like even just looking at whether they're better or worse, I think in some cases it's just a different use scenario. So these kind yeah. of birds, I think in the base game, on the baseboard specifically, um, these are you know generally more used as a late game point bomb. You know, you wait until you've got loads of these birds down with a certain nest type, you play this and you get a bunch of eggs. But um, being able to use it for the temper early on, yeah, I think that is a, a definitely a good use case here for these kind of birds. Right. I think I think another factor that makes some of these birds more powerful in Oceania as well is the easier food access. Because birds yeah. like Says Phoebe mm. and the Flycatcher are quite expensive. In base game, it's hard to get you know enough food to play them in one turn. But now with Oceania, it's a lot easier. Yeah, really, really good point there. All right, um, back to me. I don't think this is going to be controversial, but I, I think Wood Duck kind of, you know, worth getting mentioned here. Oh, yeah. Um, I think, you know, that there's no no debate that Wood Duck was already, you know, pretty good in base game and European, but I think it just become even stronger um, in Oceania. Yeah, I think uh, it's maybe an obvious one, but like you say, um, already so good, I think, on the baseboards. It's the kind of bird where if you see it in your starting hand, you're going to keep it almost every single time. And I think just now, with these new Oceania boards, um, it is a must-keep, I think, every single time. Um, even just again, like we talked about with the California quail and some of these other birds that are maybe a bit more expensive, being able to keep that starting nectar, get it down turn one, you know, even just that as a, as a bit of a tempo save um, is so so key and then you're already unlocking the additional food access just by having that first bird down so um yeah this is maybe a slightly different category where some of the early ones we've already looked at here were maybe not great on the baseboards and now they're good uh wood yeah. is definitely one that was already at least <laughs> good if not great and now it's it's absolutely amazing um yeah it's the dream boards. bird that you want to have absolutely i think um yeah like i say i take this in any starting hand so I'm um, definitely happy to see it and definitely not one uh, that I'd want to see my opponent playing early on in the game. Yeah, absolutely. All right, and now we'll come to our last category of birds uh, for this video. And it is a category of birds. We're going to be talking about tuck and lay birds. So mm. uh, we're talking about birds like the bush tit, like the grackle. I think particularly these kind of ones that can go in the forest and the wetlands. Um, just being able to get eggs outside of the grasslands again, as a common theme with the, the California quail we looked at earlier, is so important. So, yeah, again, these are birds that I would say they were pretty good in the base game. Mm -hmm. You know, I'd quite happily start with the bush tip, put that in the wetlands and start drawing cards. Uh, but I think now with the additional card access, definitely stronger there. Um, and of course, being able to get eggs there in the wetlands, um, definitely strong, but good in the forest as well. Uh, yeah. Maybe I'll turn to you, Tay, as our, as our forest bush tip expert. Um, <laughs> You know, how, how do you see that working here on the on the Oceania boards? I mean, I definitely love seeing that, you know, the forest bush tit strategy is coming to life with oh, the yeah. Oceania board. Yeah, <laughs> and I mean, like you say, you know, they are, they are already strong. Like, they were already strong in the base game, but now they just have a lot more, you know, flexibility. Like, you know, it, they are not just, like, great for the wetland or the grassland. Now they're totally viable in the forest as well. Absolutely, yeah. I, I love a situation like this where, you know, a bird might not have been viable in, in a certain uh, habitat before. And now it just, you know, it's a breath of fresh air. It kind of breathes new life uh, into these birds and just gives you more options. And to be honest, I think even in the grasslands, these can work as well sometimes. You know, if you if you draw quite a yeah. lot, if you've got really good card access early in the game, you know, picking one of these up sort of towards the late game, it does make the grassland 
um, expam strategy, you know, a bit more of an option, perhaps. Yeah. Whereas otherwise, you know, you might only be laying eggs and getting a couple of eggs if you can start turning um, those cards into tucks and eggs as well. Um, yeah, can just give you more options for for scoring points. But yeah, really the key here, I think, with these is, is being able to play those in the other habitats, being able to put them in the forest and the wetlands, um, start and get yourself some eggs there. Um, definitely strong indeed. So there we go. Those are the birds we were going to take a look at here today uh, that we think have got better since the introduction of uh, the Oceania expansion. Uh, and we're also going to be taking a look in another video at the birds that maybe have not got so good and maybe have mm, got a little bit worse yeah. uh, with the introduction <laughs> of the Oceania expansion. So do stay tuned for that and uh, hopefully you can join us again for that one. Uh, but until then, thank you very much for watching and thank you very much, Tay Ray enjoyed me in this video to talk through those birds yeah thank you for having me this was fun <laughs> you didn't see it i mean you're gonna see it i was oh, struggling you... to find the bird so much <laughs> <laughs> i i do i do remember this from last time like uh i'm i like when i've had to go and edit where you've been scrolling and like you scrolled past something <laughs> and then had to turn around and go back it's quite funny